Hi, this is Dr. Linda Davis, and today I want to work through part two as we take Excel and graph and bring it over to PowerPoint. And to start this process, um, part one, we were kind of showed you how to go to Morningstar.com, seek out the financials, which I'm on the financials tab right now for our sample company is Microsoft, and we looked for the revenue and. Uh, for 2008, as you see here, is 60 billion, 420 million, all the way to 2012 on the other side. So that's all the revenue figures. And make sure you add the correct multiplier. This one says USD, which is US dollars in million. So that means you've got to add six zeros to whatever amount you see here. So pay attention. Every company is different on that. So there we have revenue. And down below, as we mentioned in part one video, we have the net income down here. I've gone ahead and placed these values in an Excel sheet. So let me bring these up. And I have a side by side comparison here. I've done two chart, two um, spreadsheets, um, both showing the same values, just done in a different way. And the reason being, if I take 2008 values for revenue and type out 60 billion, 420 million, of course it's going to look like that. If I choose to notate it in billions like I have in the second spreadsheet in billions. This table shows revenue for 2008 at 60.42 but that's in billions. It is notated properly and graphs much better if you do it like this. So that's why I'm going with this notated graph. Same thing for net income. Uh, we notated it at 17.68 billion. So just pay attention to where whether your company's notation should be in millions or in billions. Now let me uh, go ahead and bring this one up and we have the table. I went ahead and formatted it to make it look a little easier for you to, to view. Uh, I do want to let you see what we're working toward here. I have a revenue graph already built and I have put it placed it in another sheet in this document called revenue. If I click on revenue you can see what we're headed toward because we're preparing this graph for PowerPoint. We would not do it like this if we were just going to leave it in Excel. Um, but we have to get it ready for PowerPoint, which means uh, transparent backgrounds. We have to have big and bold values because with PowerPoint, the smallest you want is 24 point font size. Uh, we have uh, our data points, which are called our markers here, are very large and colorful. Our axes lines are very large or thicker and more colorful. And you may also notice here we have values from Morningstar that go up to 2012, but actually we've extended our x-axis for the years to include 2013 and 2014. And we need to do that because when we get around to doing the linear regression analysis that we'll discuss in part three of this video series. So let's go back and show you how we got to this point, which is how this is as far we're going to as far as we're going to take it in um, step for part two. All right, let me go back to sheet one where we have this and we'll just work on a revenue one today. And whatever we do as far as making a chart for the uh, for revenue, you're going to do the same steps when you make your chart for net income. So it's the same process and we can pull two charts from the same table. So first of all, we want to highlight what we need in our first chart or first graph is just highlight the year and what follows and revenue and what follows. Okay, once that's highlighted, we can go up to insert and you'll see a section for charts. Now the type of chart we like today is scatter. Scatter, if you click on it, you'll see your choices. We want just the dots. We do not want any connect the dot scenarios here. So just the dots, please. So click on that. It'll instantly give you the values. Obviously we have to do a lot of formatting to make it look like the one I just showed you. So we're going to um, just take this one. Let's, I'm just going to copy it and put it on sheet three for now. And let me just paste it up into uh, B3. And I'm on 100% zoom here. I do need to make this a little bigger. Um, first of all, let me just make the font size 18. And the reason we select 18 in Excel because the transposition rate uh, makes it to where if you do an 18 point font size in Excel, it will become a 24 point font size in PowerPoint, which is the minimum you would want for PowerPoint anyway. So I'm going to make this graph a little bigger. 
in Excel. And I'm going to get rid of some, th rid of some things. I'm going to uh, make some things larger, more colorful, uh, totally for PowerPoint reasons, of course. So let me take the revenue title box. I don't need that because I'm going to probably add that back in PowerPoint. So I'm going to get rid of that er there. And uh, I don't really need this legend over here. And things start changing, as you can see, that I don't want, but we'll fix that in just a minute. Let's get rid of your grid lines. So activate all your grid lines. We don't really need those. And you'll notice they're activated when you see all the little circles at the end of each line. Hit delete on your keyboard. And we'll also walk over here. We've got some values on y-axis and x-axis that don't really need. 0, 0.00, I don't really need to show that every time. Let's get rid of those uh, two decimal places there. So basically anything on this graph is easy to format. Just, just double click on it and you'll get uh, some kind of screen that'll help you uh, take care of that. There it is. Okay, so here we go. When the format axis screen comes up, you want to go down to number and with number you can say decimal places zero. So put zero in there and we'll close that for now just to show you how that works. Okay, so another item you may notice is you have no activity on this graph between zero and, and 50 billion actually and we need we will put our billions marker in there in just a minute but uh, on the uh, we'll create our own y-axis title for this but from 0 to 50 there's no activity so we really don't need those values showing you don't always have to show 0 so what we can do is go right back where we were that same screen double click on the y-axis values and the screen will pop up and if you'll just go to um, look what you got here under axis options. Uh, the minimum, this is how you change it because it's always going to start at zero unless you tell it different. So I'm going to click fixed instead and say, well, you know, I'll, I'll show 50 billion, but I don't want to see 40 billion or 30 or 20 or 10 or zero. So I can make it um, start at actually um, 50. And I do have to kind of look ahead and say, well, if I'm projecting out to 2013 and 2014, is it going to go down, you know, in those areas? Well, probably not. So I think I'm safe at 50. So I'll change that, and you'll see what happens on the graph. See, when you change that and get rid of 0 through 40, it kind of brings your data points down into a more manageable area. And you may notice that, you know, with Microsoft's uh, revenue here, we may not have gone high enough. So maybe we need to adjust the height. Uh, 75 billion might uh, um, not be high enough. Um, we may, when we do regression analysis, it may take it up even further outside what we currently have. So if I want to be on the safe side, I may just go up and say, well, let's change the maximum value. Maybe it needs to be, um, you know, 90. I can always come back and adjust if I need to. So I'll close that out. Now, now I've got room. Um, I need to work on the x-axis now, which is our years. I certainly don't need 2008.5 for my years on this, so I'm going to uh, uh, amend that a bit. So double-click on that. And this time, it's a case of changing your major unit. So hit Fixed. Instead of having every half year show, which is 0.5, I just want every year to show. So let me fix that. While I'm here, I can also change the maximum because um, I want to eventually do linear regression analysis with this, and since my regular data stops at 2012, which is what it sees, I want it to actually go up to 2014 because that's where I like my projections to go at least two years beyond the last known amount. So we'll fix that as well. And now you've got room to project out. I mean, we can kind of guesstimate it's going to go out here somewhere, so we probably got room um, and not need to go. Hopefully it's not going to pitch downward. So that's some basic things we've already taken care of. Now, we've got to get more transparent on some things and more colorful and bolder on other items in this graph. So let's take care of that next. Okay, the backgrounds. We've got white on white. We've got a chart area. We've got a plot area that we need to make both of those transparent. So I can just um, double click on those and make sure that your fill, you just say no fill, that gets rid of the white. And if you go to border color, I really don't want a border either, so I'll say no line for that. Close that. Now if I click away from it, um, you can't, now you'll just see the background of the chart area. So let's get rid of the chart area. I have to go to the edge to do that. And again, say fill, no fill. 
and this is when you'll really see the difference take place on the transparency. And go to border color and say no line on that as well. So we'll close that out. And now when you see it, the grid lines in the background now, because it's the white is gone. Now I want to go and uh, just click on each section. So I'm going to start with the Y axis. I want these big, bold, and colorful. So I'm going to go home and just change it to some bright um, font color. I'm thinking I'm going to have a black PowerPoint background. So, you know, I'll go with um, maybe the green, make it bold. Um, and then the next the part to click on is uh, that's kind of hard to activate sometimes is the um, format axis or the axis. See if I can get on it, one of them to make it bigger and bolder. There it is, vertical axis. Let me click on that. And line color and line style. Two areas here I got to work with. Now I want a solid line and when I click on that it's going to give me a color choice option now. Um, and I can go with um, eh, some kind of bright color. I can go with maybe the blues and the line style because I want it thick. I want it bold. The width uh, at 0.75 is not going to work. I want it like at least four or four and a half, usually for PowerPoint. So we'll take it up to that. Okay, and you can see what a difference that makes on the y-axis vertical. And let me go do the same thing down here to the x-axis, the years. And let me go back to home again and make that um, green's fine for that. I make it bold. And again, try to get on the um, line color and line style for the x-axis. So I'll do a solid line. Uh, again, I can do that. Color's fine. And the line style, I have to take that up again to 4.5 to make it thick enough. There we go. Now, uh, the last thing here that takes care of uh, part two of this video is the marker size. These are our data points, obviously, but I want to make them bigger and more colorful. And I think that's where part three of the video series starts. So if you want to jump ahead, um, we'll go to marker um, options and we'll just say built in where you get to pick. Do you want a diamond? Do you want a square? What shape do you want? You want a triangle? I like diamonds, so I'll stick with that. And the font size, main thing here, I like to kick it up to about a 14 font size. Now, if I want to change the marker color, uh, I can change it to some solid color or lots of choices here, obviously. And I'll pick some bright shade of red, probably. All right. And for some reason, that didn't attach itself to all my, must have not had them all selected. Anyway, we can um, format the data point and kind of go through there and do the same thing. Red, that works. And mark our options. Yeah. And change it to 14. Like I said, should have act I thought I had them all activated, but apparently not. Alright. Uh, mark our options. We said built in 7 and make that a 14 instead. And, oops, got to make it red. There we go. Again, 14. And marker fill. We need solid and red. Okay. And the last one. Don't want that one, obviously. Just a nice solid red. Okay. And we also need to add um, a vertical axis title here. I mean, most everybody would know that was years at the bottom. Add years if you want to. But I definitely need uh, a revenue in billions axis title over here. So let's add that. And we have these great chart tools up here. So we can go to um, Layout tab. And you can select axis titles. And this is obviously the vertical. And I think it's the vertical title I like because I just like to click that in there and then type in what it is I want it to say. And like I said, um, 
Just get rid of all that and just put in our revenue in billions. And if you want to reduce the font size of that, that's probably fine as well. Take it down a notch or two so it doesn't expand our... And if you want to expand it, uh, let's see if we can grab the bottom corner and make that a little bit. Yeah, it may not be cooperating today, but I do want to change the color because I've got a black background on this PowerPoint slide that's coming up. So I would want to take that to um, a bright color as well, a bright font color. So it can be, um, you know, bright yellow, even though obviously that wouldn't show up very good on this particular, at this point, even though you're not going to be uh, going with that. But you can use um, some kind of color that'll work. If you want to use the turquoise again, I was looking for that turquoise color. Um, we'll use that one. I think that'll show up good on black. So the revenue is in billions. And uh, at this point, this is, takes you through part two, and part three will pick up with the marker increase in size and color. Okay, thank you for your time.